So next couple of months, uh, in November, we have uh, Simon uh, Rindle uh, presenting on Nexus, which is uh, Scrum.org's uh, scaling framework. Uh, and we also have a talk that we're doing. One second, please. How long have you been in this building? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, Thank you. Um, and we also have a, a joint a joint event uh, with uh, uh, AI Wales and Cloud Native Wales uh, on the a, on the seventh of November as well. So it's outside our usual cadence, but uh, it should be a good one. Some from Netflix there talking about how they do stuff there. That's not here though. That's in a different location. That's the DevOps Group office in Cap Tower, which is where Cloud Native Wales normally do their stuff. So uh, that's uh, we'll be tweeting out about that. It's not on our meetup page. It's on Cloud Native Wales meetup page because you have to find some way to control the RSVP. So if you want to know more about that, uh, give me a shout, and I shall tell you. Is there a Swansea meetup in November as well? But yeah, we've got um, the meetup in Swansea went really well. The first one, which is great. So there's another Swansea one um, in I think it's November. I think there's one in November as well. Uh, and then in December, if you want to see Dave dressed up like an elf, I strongly encourage you to come <laughs> to a slightly earlier than advertised, because uh, we didn't want to do it on Christmas Eve, thinking we wouldn't get much of a turnout. Um, it's on the 20th in December, and we're going to be doing a um, workshop-style game, which is going to be Christmas-themed, so we hope to see you all for that one as well. So you, you want some people to turn up and you can tell them I'm dressed as an elf? You would definitely dress up as an elf. You feel free to also come dressed in festive attire for that one. It'll be fun as we turn up on our own. In this <laughs> yeah, first yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this month we have a, um, a good colleague and friend of mine, uh, James Osborne, who is one of the senior lecturers down at the National Software Academy. Um, I'm not going to do the spiel and butcher it all for you. You can do that for yourself in yeah, a second. Yeah, butcher it, don't worry. Um, <laughs> But you know, we talk a lot about how we need to be investing in the next generation of, of talent and how, um, certainly from my experience, we tend to do a lot of reskilling with people and getting them to understand um, agile techniques. Um, and from a university level, it, it often isn't driven in throughout the entire syllabus. So really encouraged to see the sort of stuff that, uh, that these guys are doing. And um, we've actually got Jack in the audience who's a living, breathing proof evidence that this stuff works. So you can all go and quiz him afterwards about his, uh, his actual experiences. So if you can all give a round of applause to James. the next generation. Um, why, why are we in this business? Why do we have a software academy? Well, 
I'm going to talk to you about uh, two of the publications that we've had, or one that we've had and one that's about to be released. So they're both experience pieces. The first one is about how we set up the academy, and the second one is uh, how we teach Agile, which is the bulk of this talk. Okay. So the first one, you can get that for free on there, tons more detail, um, but I'm just going to give you a brief overview of, of what's in that uh, particular research paper. So there is a shortfall, as I have said in my uh, introduction um, on, on the web, of about 3,000 IT professionals, and that's just here in Wales. That's a huge number. The universities collectively probably churn out maybe four, five hundred CS graduates a year, and it's nowhere near enough. Um, we've also realised that this this critical gap between the demand for software developers and the number of people with those skills. So that was back in 2012, first of all. And then along came the Newport Business Development Task Force in 2014, and they came to this conclusion. Uh, part of that task force included people like Simon Gibson from Alacrity. Um, so obviously they decided to then approach some of the universities around the patch and think, how can we address this? How can we solve this problem? And before this actually happened, before we realised that this was a problem not just for Wales but for the UK, um, this guy called Shadbolt wrote a report back in 2016 and he said either they're lacking business skills, the graduates, the CS graduates that we're churning out, or they don't have the up-to-date technical skills. So we're teaching them things like PHP and what they actually need is Angular and React and more modern technologies. So we had to do a whole about face really as a university and think how are we going to train that next generation of software engineers, not just in agile methods but in all of the latest and greatest technologies. And what are they? How do we select them? So we've got to obviously work with industry to select the right up and coming technologies for us to teach them so that the graduates have the right skills when they hit the workplace. Okay? So just to put this into context, um, we're part of Cardiff University. We were founded a long time ago. We're a member of this group called the Russell Group, which is really a focus on research. We're a research intensive university. And our teaching is informed by our research. We're ranked fifth in the UK for research quality and second for research impact. So across the UK, that's a huge thing. We're having a massive impact. We do a, a huge range of um, innovative degrees. So for example, we have one which is across between journalism and computer science as well. Um, that's over now delivered in uh, one central square. So that's a huge investment that the university's made there. Really, teaching has come along as something of an afterthought in terms of universities measuring themselves against each other. We are silver for teaching excellence across the institution, but we like to think that we were improving those practices. So, I come from the School of Computer Science and Informatics. Um, the Software Academy is part of that, but our entire degree programme, or set of degree programmes, um, includes things like uh, placements. So we have students that go out on year-long placements. Those students really do learn what it's like to work in the workplace. They are very much ahead of the curve compared to those students that don't have that work experience. Okay, That's the number one differentiator. So we thought, how can we do that for the Software Academy and get students with that workplace experience inside three years instead of having like a four-year sandwich degree? So we've got computer science, we've got applied software engineering, which is the name of the degree that we do, uh, we deliver over in Newport. Uh, we've got degrees in security and forensics, high performance computing, and visual computing as well. Again, they all come with a year in industry as variants, apart from ours. Um, they also offer a year abroad, so there's a huge spectrum of different degrees that students can do, including taught and research masters and so on. But the key for us, at the Software Academy is the industrial link. We've got to have and maintain a strong industrial link base, not just for placement students, but for also for projects and things that we run, and I'll explain a little bit more about those kind of things in a second. So we come back to this question of work readiness. 
why, why is it that graduates, when they leave university, aren't immediately ready to hit the ground running? Well, companies would traditionally take graduates perhaps into a graduate training program, and as James said, give them those uh, boot camp sessions, bring them up to speed with the way that they might have to work in the real world, work in teams, work using agile practices and so on. And although we have a research focus traditionally in the university, our research does in fact inform and inspire our teaching. Um, so we, we've actually got uh, quite a pedigree in the way that we look at how we can teach these topics. There's a lot of uh, research out there on uh, best ways to teach Agile. And really, all you've got to do is give it a try, see what works, see what doesn't, be Agile, adapt your curriculum and reiterate. So the longer our degree runs, the better we're going to get at delivering Agile to students or Agile knowledge. And again, we can only refine the programme when we get input from industry people like yourselves as well. So that's really important for us. So as I said, back in 2015, Cardiff University, Welsh Government and Alacrity got together, put their heads together as a result of this Newport Business District report and thought, right, let's give it a go. Let's see what we can do. The thing is, we needed a dedicated environment because to start up a new degree scheme, you need space. Um, we didn't have any space in Cardiff. Um, finding space in Cardiff for um, a batch of students is actually quite a difficult thing. So we went out to Newport. And our environment, if you've not already come to see the Software Academy in Newport, this is an open invitation now to come and visit us, find out what we do, and see how we can work together. The environment's completely different. Instead of being delivered in Cardiff, the students are actually encouraged to commute to Newport. Okay? So we give them the cost of a train ticket. So they get used to commuting to Newport. Uh, they work three days a week in an open plan office. They sit in desks at four, so they're slightly smaller than these desks in front of us. They have a laptop uh, that they're loaned by the university to do the work on with all the software installed that they need. And as I say, they work for 10 till 4 day. So it's not like a university timetable where you might have a 9am lecture on a Monday morning, which is the graveyard shift of lectures, all the way through to bits on a Friday afternoon and things, uh, that are fitted piecemeal really, with separate lectures and laboratories. Lectures with like 200 people just sat there trying to absorb information, and then separate computing labs. It's all an environment fairly similar to this, apart from the monitors and the keyboards, this, this particular environment, this open plan environment is pretty much identical. They've got a kitchen as well, it's not quite as nice, but uh, it's a really nice environment to work in, and it's a nice environment I think for the students as well. So this is Carl, he's one of our lecturers, and this, this shot actually shows the third year who have uh, graduated, so this is Jack's year, so Jack's sat right in the middle of the room, Hi Jack. Uh, so this is, this is his year group and they're over in our old building in Newport which is, um, we outgrew it basically. We had a floor and a half of the um, platform building which is where Innovation Point are and we've moved to the old train station building now in Newport. So we have three floors there. It's very similar in its layout. Um, we have projects that run and they come from industry partners. So this, for example, you can't necessarily see the industry person because um, uh, he's been chopped out slightly, but it's the guy in the grey. He's actually there having a, a sprint review with these guys. So this team has produced something for him and he's now going through it and saying, well, I like this, I don't like that, change it. These are now our active third years and at this point they're working on a group project so again, it's, it's a very much um, a dynamic environment. We don't force them to sit down for hours and on end and sit in lectures and things. Um, a typical teaching session, such as one of mine, would be let's do a little bit of theory and then let's put it into practice. Let's give it a go. So for me, for Agile, it's usually we're up at whiteboards doing stuff and, and uh, playing games, and I'll get onto those more because I want some of you guys to come and play some games with our guys in a couple of weeks. And of course, you get the times when uh, there he is, um, when, when they're up the whiteboards actually doing work. Um, 
and thinking about uh, trying to solve problems. And at this point, I think they're just drawing up some kind of process board. But yeah, there, there's been a great bunch of students, all of them. So we started back in 2014-15 with just eight students on this pilot with Alacrity. Our first year, and we're on the fourth iteration of that, so we're able to refine the curriculum at regular intervals on the yearly cycle as per the university's um, guidelines. Our first year was 17, so that's uh, Jack's year. Uh, this is the number of people that actually uh, completed, graduated. Um, in our next year, we have 49, 48, and 44. So this year's intake was 44. Uh, we're on a slight downward trend because if you actually look at the birth rate, number of 18 years old, you know, 18 year olds is actually down. Okay, this is a millennium phenomenon. Um, but hopefully in the next few years, five or six years, that gap will actually increase um, back up the numbers. So I'm a second year lecturer and I'm in my third iteration of teaching Agile now. So I'm, I'm pretty settled in what I actually deliver, but I'm happy to be disrupted in terms of content and, and method and so on. We are on our second batch of third years. So we had 17 of them graduate last year. If they all graduate this year, we've got 49. So that's people entering the workplace that understand Agile and Scrum and Kanban and all kinds of lovely things that you might want to hire them. Um, and we have our first iteration this year of a master's programme. These are general STEM students with a first degree who have decided that they want to do a conversion into understanding about computer science. So in one year we give them enough agile and DevOps to be potentially dangerous to go out and work with. We do it all using projects, we've got to. To simulate something in the classroom and have me come up with um, some kind of project for everybody to do it doesn't make sense. We've got plenty of people out there in the industry with problems that they might want to solve. It might be build a minimum viable product or a prototype for something that is not necessarily high priority for them, but something that is a niggle, something that they might want a system to solve. Those are the kind of problems that we look for and that we want to actually work on with you. Typical projects run for four weeks. In the third year, they get 10 weeks to concentrate on this in the second semester. So this is after Christmas. So if you've got something that is quite a meaty project, um, we can cope with those as well. We select them from a pool of project proposals that come in. And it's brilliant that we have got lots and lots of choice. Um, but we would, we would also invite further choice. We really want to try and increase the number of projects that we can do. Um, so if you've got something that you want to work on with us, please do talk to us. Um, and we use one project to meet multiple, what, I call, what we call learning outcomes. So the way that we set up a module, especially for Agile, is I want them to, by the end of it, in the second year, understand Scrum. I want them to understand Kanban. I want them to be able to play the role of a scrum master or a product owner. I want them to be a servant leader rather than a dictator type scrum master. I want to foster team working. Um, so this year, 15% of their final module score is actually based on their aspects of team working. 5% of that is actually given to them by their <coughs> colleagues, by their other students, peer marking, uh, which is new this year. Um, other learning outcomes for me include being able to mix and match Kanban and Scrum and know really just enough to be able to go out in industry and say, yeah, okay, you might be doing that this way, but have you tried it like this? Have you tried putting whip limits on things? Have you tried these other methodologies? Because they'll know a little bit more about other agile and non-agile methods as well. So hopefully I'm, I'm putting them on, on the path towards becoming somebody like an agile coach. They won't have the experience, but they'll know enough to be hopefully on that path. So our second publication, which is due for release in mid-December, is part of uh, this book, Agile and Lean Concepts for Teaching and Learning. And this gives you a view of two and a half years of our experience. It's taken a year to get this thing through and up to publication. Yeah? Journal articles are much faster. A book, as I've learned, takes a long time. Um, but it'll be nice to see it in print. Uh, you're going to get the uh, abridged version of it now. 
So as I say, we've developed this degree in collaboration with industry. We've had 250 companies through the door, which is a fantastic number. Again, we want more, more people to come and visit us because it gives us options and it gives you guys options as well in terms of hiring them in the future, hiring students. Um, if you've seen us already, come visit us again because we've moved. Um, again, we select projects from a pool. Um, they all fit the learning outcomes for multiple modules. So I actually work in collaboration with Carl and Yulia. Um, Yulia's not here tonight. Uh, she works on uh, databases. Carl teaches them Enterprise Java and the Spring Boot Framework. And I do Agile and they build a project, a web-based project using Spring and databases. So we build one project and we mark it from three different perspectives. Because there's no point in having something that they do for each individual model because it's not <coughs> impressive enough. It's not something that's useful. We want it to be impressive though so that the students can then take it out into the world of work or mainly to interview actually and say, right, I built this. Let's have a look at it and take somebody like a, a future employer through the application. Students typically spend 30 to 50% of a semester on a project. That's a significant amount of time. So I try and cram them full of theory early on. I give them an exam, a multiple choice exam, which looks very similar to an agile certification exam that you do online. And then we get into project work with a daily diary, um, which lists their experience. And then at the end, they do a piece of reflection for me. What did they learn from actually doing the project? What will we do differently next time? If you do work on with a project, the IP remains yours. Yeah? We do ask, however, though, that the source code be made open if possible. Again, students, as I said, can use the work, uh, projects to showcase their talent. Uh, they work in laptops on an open plan office. A contact <coughs> session, a teaching session, is a two and a half hour block. So it's a morning or an afternoon. Um, and I don't want to stand up here for two and a half hours and talk. I, I never do. So, as I say, the sessions are a little bit of theory and then put something into practice or get up and do an activity. Now, because it's a book chapter, they asked me to look at who else is actually doing Agile in the classroom or Agile at universities, and there's a huge list of references there, uh, both at undergraduate level and postgraduate. Um, thing is, only one of those listed, Schilling and Clamour, are actually using real projects. The rest of them are making stuff up or just doing simulated scrums with games. Yeah? But not actually doing Agile with a real project, which is, in, in my opinion, a complete waste. Their observation was that they failed to establish a community of practice. They didn't get enough buy-in from the industry people that they were working with to actually continue driving that forwards. So they did it for one year and stopped. Whereas we're on fourth iteration now for the first year, so we're, we're going strong, which is really good. Um, Crop and Meyer take a similar approach to my module. Uh, they do half of a semester on theory and half on a project, again, which is similar. Um, but they do not use real projects. They simulate. They do a simulated project. And one of the uh, other members of staff in the university has the, the, the product owner role. Uh, so it's a bit disappointing, really, on, on what other universities are up to. This is why I say in industry engagement is really important for us. Our programme looks like this. Uh, three years with autumn and spring semesters. And then in the summers, we really encourage our students to go out on work placement. So what happens is uh, companies offer work placements to students. Uh, we have them write CVs. They go through whatever recruitment process the company requests. If it's tests, like a Java certification exam or anything like that, then they, they do it. They get then the experience of going through that hiring process as early as possible. And again, it gives them, over the summer, a couple of months, two, three months worth of work experience. So instead of having to do a, a four-year degree, perhaps with a third year in industry, they get time during the semester with us on projects, and they also get the summers. So they get almost as much work experience in three years as they would in four on a traditional sandwich degree. In the mix, um, we give them computational thinking to begin. From the agile perspective, in software development skills one and two, they get a little bit of agile, which evolves. 
and then they get agile project management with me in the second year, first half, and then they're expected to run with it and, and either pick agile or any other development methodology for the third year they want. The other way that we work is using a technique called spiral learning. So we tell them a little bit, we let them put it into practice. We do that across a semester, and then the following semester we give them a little bit more detail. We build upon their foundation, okay? So we're not overwhelming them with too much stuff up front, saying, yeah, you've got to learn Scrum in week one. We, we build upon a, a solid foundation. The students get repeatedly exposed to the core concepts, and we use these projects as a vehicle for learning. So as I said, we, we cannot stress enough that we need industry projects to drive this degree. You go through, so you go from software development one through two to APM with me, and then you have a large team project, which I've probably said already is 10 weeks. In that first year, they get JavaScript, Java and Python, and they're expected to look at simple mobile and web apps. We act as scrum masters at that point, the staff, um, and our clients are uh, product owners. We, we, we stress communication and project management. We don't stress everything that is scrum, okay? Our first time round, we actually only gave them scrum as per Schwaber and Sutherland in the second semester. So the Schwaber and Sutherland paper is about 20 pages long, the idea is that that encapsulates the basics of the Scrum process, and it does for the most part. Um, we gave them it in the second semester. So we didn't give our first years that. They had enough on with learning Git and all these languages, and learning to work together. We realised the second time around, though, that we could bring this forward. So they requested they have more Agile earlier, so we gave it to them, which is a good thing. Some of the games that we play, so these are our current second year students. Um, in their first year, they will play uh, a game, Celebrity Prioritization. Uh, this game is, if anyone's uh, not seen it, uh, you decide who you're going to pull off the Titanic first. Who are you going to save? Um, it's a mix of people from celebrities through to politicians. Nine times out of ten, it's the politicians that end up uh, drowning. And uh, for some reason, they insist on serving people like Bill Gates. I don't know why. Um, some of them say, because he could give me a job. Uh, that's valid, I suppose. Um, but yes, we end up with politicians, and usually Simon Cowell gets um, left on the boat as well. Other games include that old classic, the uh, Marshmallow Tower, the Marshmallow game, the spaghetti. Uh, so again, these guys are our current... Uh, Third year? Yeah, these guys are third years. Um, so this, this would have been a couple of years ago when they actually did this uh, exercise back in third year. Um, and again, third years again, um, working collaboratively, doing exercises that are breaking down those barriers to teamwork, yeah? letting people get to know their classmates and so on, and uh, thinking ambitiously and building all kinds of weird stuff. So our year one, our first iteration, we were looking at teams of three to four students. That kind of worked well. Uh, we looked at problem solving, code quality, and I'm not gonna say that we used Kanban or Scrum boards, or that we used Scrum by the book. I'm just gonna say that we did project tracking. We just allowed them to track the status of their projects. We did, however, have iterations, two two-week ones with client reviews. We didn't have a retrospective at the end of each sprint, we just did one at the end of the four weeks. Okay, so it's not really Scrum proper. We then, for the following semester, brought in branching strategies um, that were compatible with DevOps, which would be taught in the subsequent semester. Uh, T-shirt sizing and no estimates, and TDD, BDD, and this tool called Tiger, which is, um, You've all heard of JIRA, it's kind of like JIRA, okay? Uh, but it's free, woohoo! Um, problem is, and we realized this and we stopped and we changed, um, when we said hashtag no estimates, it wasn't a case of, ooh, we'll all drink the Dan McCanty Kool-Aid and we'll, we'll do no estimates and things like that. So actually they just stopped. And they just stopped estimating because we didn't assign any marks, any credits to it. Okay, so we weren't encouraging good behavior. 
they just stopped estimating. Oh, it's not going to be measured, we're not going to do it. Yeah? That's the old one metric to measure. We weren't measuring it, so they weren't doing it. Uh, stories were too big that we found and branches lived for too long and merge hell happened because branches lived too long and so on. So these are the standard things that you see in the workplace, long lived branches and so on. So we tried to address that with our second iteration. Uh, we increased the team size because we had more students in that year. We went from teaching about 20 to teaching about 60, a rough three times increase in number of students. Again, we did the scrums in the same way. Uh, we retro at the end of week four. So these are the first years of this. Yeah. We did weekly planning. We made sure that they made good stories. They didn't do any estimation in that first semester, the second year. And we found that problems including breaking stories down. They didn't really understand how to break stuff down effectively, how to come up with those thin slices and so on. We also had problems with acceptance criteria. So the quality of the stories wasn't as, as good as we would have liked. In that spring semester, we then brought in those branching strategies in preparation for DevOps. We then thought about story splitting and estimation. Um, but again, we just couldn't get across to them about thin slice. This idea of just doing a tiny bit of functionality at every story across all of the layers of their web application. And this is another team uh, with a, a customer, with a client, looking at a review. And these guys are doing show and tell, um, either to clients or to the rest of the class, so they're giving a presentation. And so we encourage that as well. The, the students are often broken up into, in, to investigate a certain aspect of something and then report back to the rest of the group. So you're doing peer assisted learning there. So this was in preparation for bringing them into the second year where I try and give them agile and just agile across an entire module. So we look at more complex enterprise ready projects. As I mentioned with Carl and Yulia looking at spring and databases. Uh, this time the students are the masters. The students all had a chance to be scrum master. We were working in uh, one week sprints as well. So we reduced uh, the cadence which gives us more opportunities for feedback. Uh, instead of meeting with the end client every week, we would still meet with them every two weeks, but they actually would meet with us as staff acting as proxy clients on the off weeks, on the odd weeks. Um, and we would, off, we would actually measure our uh, level of satisfaction. So, and we asked the customer as well, how satisfied are you with what they produce? And that formed a, a small element of the marks. Um, it now forms a larger element of the marks. Um, as a way of encouraging teamwork. I cover with them lean um, from uh, Poppendike and Poppendike, so we do the seven ways of software and everything. Um, we then do Scrum using a book by Rubin, Anderson's Kanban, and then Mike Cohn for stories and estimates. And those are the core texts that I use. I cram those in in four weeks. Then I test them on it using the Agile certification style exam. Then we play some games and then they're into the projects. And during that project phase, I might teach them things like safe, less, dad, scaling Agile, how companies like Spotify, Amazon, Facebook do Agile um, as per what they've actually published and so on. So introducing them to then other methodologies, uh, Crystal, the SDM, Waterfall, as it were, and other things. But they work in one week scrums. Teams are seven to eight in the first iteration, so this was Jack's year. And it was actually taught concurrently with the DevOps module. So like the DevOps guys and their model, uh, if you've heard of it, CALMS. Um, so this CALMS model, culture, automation, lean, measurement and sharing. Um, Running it concurrently with our DevOps module made it that I was probably the only member of staff that could deliver those two together. So I was the only one with DevOps experience. So next time around we iterated, we actually pulled them apart. And I put the automation in the DevOps and the CLMS all went in the Agile module. Uh, we did stories and tasks that were invest in smart. We did planning poker uh, and we did retrospectives um, properly every sprint, okay? The more chance you've got for feedback and reflection, the better. 
I did burn downs, I did width limits with them, scrum balls. Uh, we played get Kanban, um, so scrimmers came along and uh, Dave came along and actually did the Lego flow game with us, um, which was really good. Um, they, they learn more by doing. In fact, if you look at a, a graph of uh, the students and you look at their preferred learning styles, so visual auditory and kinesthetic, a lot of our learners on this particular degree are kinesthetic, they learn by doing. It's a, it's a massive fraction compared to the norm, which are people that are visual learners. Okay? Um, we did team dynamics. Um, because that year, that first year, uh, we had 17 students, uh, they knew each other really well. Um, there were some characters in that year uh, that didn't get on with other students, so we had all kinds of problems, you know, trying to stop them from killing each other. Um, it was an interesting problem to have. Um, scrum masters didn't really get the idea of servant leadership, um, and back then Trello didn't really do proper burn downs, which is fine. Um, but as I said, the games we enjoyed. Uh, so this is Get Kanban. Um, if you've not already played it, uh, it's a really useful game. Uh, since there are none of my students here, um, I can kind of give the game away. Along comes Carlos, the disruptive tester. <laughs> he causes all kinds of problems, adding stuff into the process that makes it slower to actually get stuff out the door, and then eventually Carlos is banished, and um, things kind of return to normal. But you've got to cope with managing running stories across a board with Carlos as an impediment. Okay? That's, that's the bulk of that. But it's a really good game to play. So Scrimmage came along, he brought a couple of sets. So again, this is uh, back of Jack's head. Um, playing uh, Get Kanban, um, and sure. we had two teams at that point. Hmm? So, sorry, just putting out the table. Ah, sorry. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're more than happy to have them come along again and, and play with them. Um, so, again, we, we didn't then buy 10 sets when we scaled up, because 10 sets of Get Kanban would have cost us like four grand, I think, something ridiculous like that. So there's a version of it that you can download off the internet for free. And uh, I spent a long time with some sticky back plastic and made 10 sets. Um, and these, these guys are our third years playing uh, that particular version for the first time. Again, they learned the important things, how to manage uh, competing priorities, how to deal with regulatory tickets, how to get stuff across the board and cope with car loss and everything else. Uh, in the spring semester, we did scaling agile. I did those other uh, methodologies and uh, looked at agile case studies. And we did some DevOps, uh, as I say, the automation part of CALMS in that spring semester. In the third year, we try and look at uh, different modules. So the interesting ones we have are emerging tech. Um, so this is stuff that's new, emerging. Uh, VR, AR, Oculus Rift, we've got a few of those. Um, C flat is Catherine's module, commercial framework for languages and tools, and the Internet of Things, so Arduinos, um, robotics, uh, all kinds of interesting stuff that you would expect to appear in a third year curriculum, uh, including legal and ethical and a large team project. Again, the students at this time were playing the Scrum Master, and we had five two week scrums. We would meet as staff with the students at that regular set of intervals and assess them on their professionalism, uh, on the quality of the product and so on. We would also be able to give them feedback and help them adapt. They would also meet uh, every two weeks with their client. Okay? Uh, some of them were really good, uh, some of our customers were really good at that point. Um, and from my perspective I thought, I don't want to prescribe any module, uh, any particular methodology. You work how you want to work. You, you pick what's sensible and run with it. Um, the team that I had last year, the third years, they were very independent. They decided off their own bat to actually go and visit the customer on site a number of times. Um, in my case, it was a health application for um, the NHS to replace a paper-based form with an electronic solution. They went and talked to the clinicians, the nurses on the wards. They did a whole on-site requirements gathering exercise. It was a fantastic experience for them. And you'll be glad to know that's all the detail I'm going to give you. 
<laughs> you've, got to, you've got to buy the book or look at the book. Um, the book, however, because it took so long to get it through, uh, a, approaching a year now, is behind on what we actually have as our current understanding of the way that we teach our job. Uh, if you want to learn more, come and talk to us. So to conclude, we don't just want to turn out <coughs> students that know Agile or SAFE and uh, certified. We want them to be able to be disruptive and useful when they go out in the workplace and bring new ideas. Project-based learning is fantastic. It's the only real way for us in computer science, and I don't care whether it's applied software engineering or regular computer science or whatever, it is the only way to learn how to actually build something useful. It's the best work experience they could ever have. And in our environment, it's safe for them to learn and it's safe for them to fail because we, we don't have industry projects that are critical, that are on the critical path. It's the stuff that, as a project, it might be nice to have, as far as you're concerned. And we've always learned that it's always best to try and give them agile as early as possible, because you, you can never start learning this early enough. So to close and come to uh, an announcement of events on the 6th of November, so that fits in nicely with other events on the 7th and the 8th, um, Digital Tuesday is actually over in the new NSA location. <coughs> Please come along. It's been advertised as a Closing the Skills Gap session. Uh, come and see what we do, what the environment's like. On the 13th of November in the morning, so uh, I've now settled on a morning session for this, I'm going to run Get Kanban with the second years and probably the master's students as well. If you're available on that morning and would like to come in and see how they run projects or the ideas, and the main thing here is you learn about their thought process, is the way that they try and solve this project management problem. Please shout out to me. Um, I'm on the South Wales Agile group. Uh, I'm on Twitter as CS8JAO, or you can just Google James Osborne Cardiff and I'll come up probably um, on the 13th. And on the 16th, we've got um, some guys from Red Hat to come and do some Agile Lego games with them. Okay, so that's a lot of material. I appreciate that, and I, I'm, I'm sorry for kind of ranting on a little bit. But I'll now open the floor to questions and, and try and answer them if I can.